In this module, we'll be looking at Solsky's rocket equation that shows the increase in velocity of a rocket after you eject the fuel mass delta m. So the fuel mass is delta m, the exhaust speed of the fuel is VE, and the rocket's going to increase its speed by a delta V after it ejects the fuel mass. So the initial momentum of the rocket is m plus delta m times V, and then the final momentum of both the rocket and the fuel will be the mass of the rocket times the increased speed plus the mass of the fuel times the speed of the fuel relative to the ground, which will be V minus the exhaust speed for the fuel. So we apply conservation momentum. The initial momentum is equal to the final momentum, and we expand the terms. So we have two terms on the left, MV plus delta MV, and on the right we have four terms, MV plus M delta V plus delta MV minus delta M times the exhaust speed of the fuel. Notice that we have four terms canceling. We have MV common to both sides, and also we have delta MV common to both sides. So now we have our conservation momentum equation is M delta V is equal to the exhaust speed times the delta M of the fuel. This is our conservation of momentum equation. If we divide by the delta T, the time required it takes to eject the, the fuel mass delta M, on the left-hand side we have the rocket thrust, mass times acceleration. On the right-hand side we have the exhaust speed times the burn rate, or dmdt. Our liftoff condition in a gravitational field will be the thrust has to be greater than the weight of the rocket. So the exhaust speed times the burn rate should be greater than uh, the weight of the rocket mg in a gravitational field. We'll consider the change in rocket speed without a gravitational field initially. So our conservation momentum equation m delta v is equal to ve delta m. If we solve for delta v, we have delta v is the exhaust speed times delta m over m. Now we'll consider an infinitesimal change in velocity. Replace delta v by dv, and, and since the rocket is losing mass, we will replace the dm of the fuel is minus dm of the rocket. So dm of the rocket will be actually negative, so this is a positive quantity here. Having separated variables, we can integrate. On the left, we have the integral of dv between the initial and final velocities of the rocket. On the right, we have dm over m integrated between the initial and final masses of the rocket times the exhaust speed. Now, if the exhaust speed is not constant, it won't be able to come outside of the integral like this. On the left-hand side, we have v final minus v initial. On the right-hand side, dm over m integrates to a logarithm evaluated between m initial and m final. We have the uh, logarithm, logarithm of the initial mass divided by the final mass. This is Solsky's 1912 rocket equation. Notice that if m initial is equal to m final, we have a logarithm of 1, which is 0. In that case, v final would be equal to v initial. There would be no change in the rocket velocity if the masses are equal. So m initial will be greater than m final, so the logarithm will be positive, and we'll have a increase in rocket speed. One of your web assigned problems is to calculate the increased speed of a squid after it ejects its propellant mass, thereby reducing its mass. M initial will be greater than M final. And this is in neglecting the resistive force, the resistive drag of the external medium. Also, the squid can adjust its rocket nozzle to, for forward propulsion as well. Next, we'll consider rocket motion in a gravitational field, uh, taking from launch the initial speed equal to zero, the final speed is now a function of time, and our final mass will take that to be a function of time. So we can calculate the speed as a function of time, is the exhaust speed times the ratio, the logarithm of the ratio of the initial mass divided by the mass as a function of time, now minus gt because we are in a gravitational field.
this would be similar to the, the rocket launch of, from one of Saturn's moons. Of course, G will be different in that case, depending on what moon you're launching from. We can calculate the rocket height by integrating V dt. Gt integrates to minus 1 half Gt squared. And now we have the integral of the logarithm. Once again, a VE comes outside of the integral uh, if it's a constant. If it's not a constant, then VE has to remain inside of the integral. And this would have to be done numerically. Notice that the integral is has dimensions of time. And if you compare this to the equation of a projectile that, that's just launched with it with a speed, initial speed VE, you can see the similarities to the kinematic equation if you just launch a projectile with an initial speed. For an example, we'll calculate the rocket height for the exponential burn. In exponential burn, we have uh, the initial mass is at t equals zero, is m initial, and then the mass decreases exponentially, and lambda is our burn constant. The larger lambda is, the faster will be burning mass. Now to calculate the height of the rocket, we substitute m of t into the rocket equation. Notice that the m initials will cancel, and we're left with the logarithm of the exponential. The logarithm of the exponential simply gives us lambda t, and lambda can come outside of the integral, and we just have to integrate t dt. And we can factor off the 1 half t squared. So our height as a function of time is proportional to t squared. Notice that we require ve lambda should be bigger than g in order for this to, to lift off. And this would be the uh, actual lift off from the lunar Apollo mission. We require ve lambda bigger than g. Our thrust is also going to be VE times the derivative of M with respect to T. Uh, and the absolute value is we have a positive thrust because DM DT is negative. At T equals zero, we can see that the thrust is just lambda VE times the M initial. We require this to be bigger than the initial weight of the rocket, M initial G. And once again, we obtain the liftoff condition that we had before that VE lambda is bigger than G. For your homework, you will consider a rocket mass with a hyper exponential burn rate, m initial e to the minus lambda t squared, with a constant exhaust speed ve. First, calculate the rocket thrust and the rocket thrust at t equals zero. Then you'll calculate what time is the rocket thrust maximum. Next, write an expression for the height of the rocket in a gravitational field, g as a function of time. Remember to simplify the logarithm term before integrating. You will need to remember the chain rule um, and also a function f of x is maximally where f prime is equal to zero. It's also uh, could be a minimum as well. 